How's it going everyone? This is Dozer. I'm going to go over the recording setup that I used to record one of my recent tracks titled Club on Fire. There will be a link in the description to my SoundCloud page and you can go check that out. So I'm going to go over the setup that I used and I'm going to go over the room acoustics. It's going to be a quick video to the point. My computer, Dell quad core, 8 gigabytes of RAM. Computer monitor turned this way, 19 inch Dell. I have other ones, but this is the one I'm using. It's turned that way because I stand behind the microphone to do my thing. Now, if I have another artist in here, I still have that facing that way because I like them to be able to see the monitor. And I can still see it if I'm sitting here. There's my headphones right there on the desk that I wear. Okay. Throw those on. I have my keyboard here because I need to be able to control the computer while I'm doing my thing on my microphone. I'm using Studio One. Pro version 2.5. All right, since I've moved to this from Cubase, I've cut all production time in half for a lot of reasons that I'm not going to go over in this video. All right, my microphone that I'm using is an AKG Perception 200 first generation, it's like a $150 mic, nothing high dollar. I got 15 feet of Megami cable going to my MU1820M audio interface. They don't make these anymore, it's discontinued, however, they do make the 1616M. That is the gain about where I'm set. Okay. I have a pop filter, but it's on a separate camera tripod stand. I remove the camera head and I put the pop filter on there and I can adjust the height, same height as the microphone. Now I have it on a separate stand because I don't want vibrations going through the pop filter from all my plosives or an artist's plosives, like whatever. I don't want that being transferred into my microphone stand. Um, I, this is just me being picky. You don't have to do this, okay? But I'm not using my high-pass filter on this microphone because it's about 300 hertz is where this starts. And it's 12 decibels per octave roll-off for a high-pass. So not super steep, but it can thin things out. I don't use it. I can do all of my high-pass my my you know my high -pass filtering inside with an EQ inside my recording program. So I don't use that. There is a 10 decibel pad on here to attenuate by 10 dB and depending on how loud the artist or myself is going to be getting between each verse or for a hook or whatever I can adjust that with that and of course when I'm standing back here I can adjust all my gain and everything and my microphone gain I can adjust my headphone gain stuff like that I have recording shortcuts set up this is my recording button and then I can stop recording right here so I can stand back here and do my recording I can look at my screen for everything this is my DSP mixer for my MU1820M. It's how I control my audio interface. And I compress on the way in using the onboard DSP compressor chip. All right, this is this my microphone channel strip and this is my send going to my recording program, Studio One. After that, if I put my compressor up there, I can compress on the way in. I'm using a 1.5 to one ratio, so not squeezing it a lot. It's got a super fast attack with about a 70 millisecond release, and I might get at a max about 10 decibels of reduction, but it usually hovers around 5. So it does maintain some, dyna dy some, some of the dynamics, but it does help with the artist or myself as you're doing your thing on your microphone, keeping the levels kind of, you know, constant. Um, it's the same thing as the UAD. It's got, you know, it's not a UAD, but it's got the chip inside with the plugins. Now, I can also. I have some reverb and some delay here I can dial into my headphones, but that doesn't get sent to my program because it's before my send. Um, a lot of you aren't even going to have to worry about that because you might not have this feature. But I dial in my reverb for myself or another artist and some delay. They'll be like, hey, I need some more reverb. I'll be like, cool, I'll turn it up. Gives them a sense of space when they're doing their thing on their microphone instead of just a dry signal. And it's latency free. There's no delay when this is happening. It's all instantaneous, pretty much. There's my headphones. I'll throw those on. All right, so that's pretty much how I'll do it. I have my mouse right here. I can just stick it on my leg and move around inside the program. All right. I do loop recording. One of the reasons why I like Studio One is because on a single track, I can loop record, and then I can. it also records the layers. So let's say I set my loop point. I'll spit my verse, blah, 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 blah. It'll start again, and it'll keep recording again, all on its own. It's called loop recording. Blah, 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 blah. Say the exact same thing the exact same way. I might do that five times. Once I hit the stop button, the space bar on the keyboard, it expands the layers, and then I can see everything that I recorded, and I can do my vocal comping. If you don't know what that is, look it up. Now, 
Right there what you see is all the sessions for my track that I'm talking about. They're ba basically different versions for the track Club on Fire. One of those sessions is my rough draft session where I use this cheap microphone here. I don't do a lot of writing because I'm a pretty busy guy. So I just come in here, I throw my instrumental in there, and then I'll record. I'll just set up two tracks for recording, and I'll record my lyrics as I come up with them. So I'll be like, hmm. I usually come up with my hook first because that sets the tone for the song. And I'll come up with my hook, and I'll basically play the instrumental, and I'll you know come up and do some freestyles, come up with what I want. Once I figure out with what I want, I record it. So instead of using a pen, I'm using a microphone and recording everything I'm coming up with. Once I'm done with that session, I will throw a quick compressor, some EQ, and some reverb. I'll mix down the full session with the instrumental going, like a track, that I can throw on my phone and I can learn my lyrics. Or if I have another artist doing that, if he's chilling in here and he's trying to come up with his stuff, all right, I'll have him sit here and he'll come up with his lyrics. Um, once he's done, he can mix that down to a session, and then he'll have something he can put on his phone, and then he can learn his lyrics. He can listen to himself over and over. He can come up with his ad-libs. He can come up with what he's going to be coming in with ad-libs. You know, yeah, what? He can come up with all kinds of ideas for his track, because now he has his own little version, all right, that he has on his phone or whatever, iPod, and he can listen to it over and over. All right, when I do that, I do that. So, And then I'll also mix down the vocals alone so that I can throw those in my next session. My next session I'm going to create is my actual session where I'm going to be recording my vocals. All right, And that is my recording session. So I'll have a whole new version where I do that. After I'm done recording my vocals, I'll save a new version of when I'm going to start doing my editing. Because I want to be able to go back in time here. That's the whole concept. To be able to go back in time to when I first started my editing. If something somewhere along the way something happens, God forbid, you can always have another version that you can go back to and start where you left off. Once I start adding plugins and doing my panning, that's a whole other version. Once I start adding stuff to my master bus for mastering, that's a whole other version. So that's what you have there. That's, that's all the versions I used for that track. All right. So I don't know. That's, that's pretty much how that works. I mean, I go over how I did the whole track. I got a tutorial CD that I have. And you can purchase that and you can learn about how I mix it. You can see all the plugins. You can see all the little secrets I have on how I tweaked the vocals and got all those cool little vocoding sound effects. I didn't even use a vocoder. All right. How I created my fake harmonies because I didn't actually sing any harmonies. I can, but I didn't. All right. Some people probably don't know how to do that kind of stuff. So I show you a basically simple way of doing all that. If you listen to the track, you'll hear all the effects on my vocals. I basically show you how to do all that. And it's, it's got to be on a CD. I can't put that on YouTube because that would just take up way too many videos. And I don't want everybody knowing how I did it because if everyone knows how I did it, it's, everybody's going to be sounding the same. And I want people to be able to take what I have and use their own creativity to come up with something new. You know what I mean? You can copy what I did. It doesn't matter. But it's better if you come up with your own ideas also. So let's go over the room acoustics now. All right. I got these panels. I have on how I built this. I have on my channel. If you go look around my channel, I have how I built all this kind of stuff. How you can build the floor to ceiling corner base traps. How I built my wall panels. How I built the ceiling clouds, which are from those videos. Everything's changed because I upgraded. Um, I got this panel down here. Now I did hang these up here, but I ended up getting a real big dip at 300 hertz, so I, I ended up taking those down. All right. Now, you don't just go into your studio and be like, hmm, I'm just going to throw some shit up and hope for the best. All right, I have an acoustic measurement microphone. I believe it's the ECM 8000. And while doing real-time analysis, that's when I hang up my stuff and see where and adjust where it needs to be. All right. So these are OC703, 3 inches thick. They're 54 inches tall by 33 inches wide. That's one panel over here, and there's another one over here. The exact, right here. The exact same panels are on the ceiling right here. I got two of those above the mix position. They are angled down with this part closer to the ceiling. Now, I didn't just say, hmm, I'm just going to put a nice long angle. I actually had real-time analysis going on my microphone with the, the noise playing, and I'm watching the frequency analysis, and then I adjusted it while I was watching the screen to see where I get the best response, okay? Um, floor to ceiling corner bass trap. All right, that's a 32-inch face. Right there, it goes from the ceiling to the floor. Sorry, I don't have a wide-angle lens, and the lighting's kind of shitty down here. So I'm using this light. Now, what you won't see in any of the videos is how I built 
it's kind of hard to see because it's all blue and black. There's a wall here, all right? You see that? Boom, boom. It's like seven or eight inches thick, all right? It's framed. I framed it, and then I put white fluffy stuff. I'll put some pictures in this video. Some white fluffy stuff, and then I put some safe and sound in front of that. So this is basically an acoustic wall, all right? There's my subwoofer, I got lucky with that, putting that there. I tried various positions around the room. This gave me the best response, pulled away from the wall a little bit. These are just the regular KRK RP5s, man. First generation, old school. And they're spaced four feet apart. I'm able to get a good mix in them because the room's treated. And I measured with these speakers and I have it set up pretty good to where I can get a, you know, a real good decent mix that's gonna be able to translate well. And the mastering engineer doesn't have to do much to it when he does the mastering. He might have to adjust some things, you know, to his taste, whatever. I have these little bitty panels here. You're, they're like at an angle here. All right, they're like 48 by 16. I have those exact same things standing up back here. See it? Right there, tall ways. And these little bitty guys that I built out of waste materials. They're all three inches thick. There's a wall back there, right? Exposed. So when I was doing my real-time analysis, I set those there and that's how I got the best response. Now as I said I had these hanging up on these little hooks. This was on there but I got when I had those up there I was trying to extend my first reflection point coverage a little better to see how the response would look. It actually gave me a big dip and I'm talking like 16 dB dip at around 300 hertz. Then once I put it down there it flattened everything out nicely. So that's what's that, and then I have the carpet, of course, on the floor. Everything else is pretty much the way it is. My RT60 time is pretty flat, around 250 milliseconds. So I don't have much on the ceiling. Um, I just have this over here on the some acoustic tiles over there. The back wall, that's a big, huge base trap. It's full of this white, fluffy stuff. This corner trap is just white, fluffy, all right? I'm not using safe and sound for that. I didn't have much bass buildup in this corner, so I just used the white fluffy stuff. It still needs to have the, f this is the frame, so I still need to put the fabric on the front. Once I staple the fabric, it's gonna look flat. It's gonna look nice. I haven't got to it yet. I had to cut my foam right there in order to fit this in there. All right. Um, like I said, that's a big bass trap. It's full of the white fluffy. It's about two inches deep. Um, it's got a rubber foam underlayment type stuff on the front and I did measurements with and without the front, the rubber front, um, and I got a better response with it on there, so I left it on there, and I covered it with fabric, all right? I have a switchable speaker system here that's the Sony Magnavox Ghetto Blaster version, <laughs> and I monitor through this. I, bring, I put my session on my laptop, and I take it to various systems, such as this one here, and I plug into it with the laptop, and I can actually hear what it sounds like on home systems. So I do it on this system and have a switchable switch to switch to these speakers here which are, which are old school Fisher ones and they got the 15 inch woofer it's a three way they got like a 20k hertz uh, frequency response so they're ghetto but I can switch to those and hear how it sounds on those only um, you need to make sure if you're doing that that when you're on the system that you this has effects and like surround speakers that you turn all that shit off you want to just have it regular I will ch check it with the the surround speakers going and everything but I usually have the EQ flat and all that kind of stuff. I just want to hear how it's going to sound because you got to think that a lot of people are going to go in there and bump up the EQ on the high end to get some, you know, turn up the treble. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. Okay, so then I have acoustic tiles. They're stacked, double stacked. And how I did that was I put a toothpick, cut it in half, and stuck it and impelled it into the one behind it. This is some um, thick acoustic really foam. <laughs> really foam? Yes, it is foam. It's really thick, it's really um, dense. It came out of the Javelin missile firing system used by the military, because I'm in the military. So this is the foam that comes in the Javelin firing system to keep it safe. And I basically said I'll take that because they're probably gonna throw it away and I used it. It just prevents some, some slap back from the wall back here. <laughs> well, this is the secret behind the room acoustics right here, this little thing up here. I don't know if you knew that, but that is scientifically proven to help. This right here, I got this from an alien planet. Um, it's actually, there, there's a tribe on the planet called Zon, and basically what this is, is 
this little tubular thing here has the most sophisticated electronics known to any alien race and it basically once you put one of these in your room your fucking frequency response just goes the best it's ever been you know what I mean and that's how I got that no really it's just a myofascial release roller that you can put on the ground I do power lifting type stuff so I put that on the ground I roll my quads on it because you got to keep them nice and loose when you're doing squats and deadlifts and stuff but I just put it up there because who knows maybe it's causing some kind of diffusion it's not a mathematical proven fact I didn't it didn't affect my measurement in any way maybe I'm getting some diffusion from from the way these speakers are set up who knows all right and that's pretty much the the room guys I mean I got my little thing right here I am a nerd I'm in electronics engineering so I got some electronics books here no one will ever probably pick these up and look at them and I have another monitor here I have like four different monitors I got like four laptops in this house that's a 22 inch gateway I gotta take that apart and uh, fix it because it stays dim and it doesn't go full brightness so I gotta pull it apart do some diagnosis on it and see what's going on with that I mean that's pretty much the studio guys I have this stuff over here you know this is just a big little hallway I got a bathroom in there I got a studio I mean a, a gym back there let's go check it out quick. we'll just peek in there it's probably messy as fuck all right, so I got a power tech rack, a bench, a deadlift platform where I could do deadlifts and such. I got a supplement rack over there. I got that from uh, going on two deployments, <laughs> one to Iraq and then one to Afghanistan, so I get a little clock right there. <laughs> I got an exercise bike. I got bands, okay. I got band pegs. All right, so I got a little gym back here. I got a keyboard, Yamaha DJX. All right. I can actually plug this MIDI in and control stuff with my knobs, but I don't even fuck with that. I'm learning music theory. I don't really know a lot about music theory, so I've been learning music theory. I need to get up on that. I keep getting sidetracked, man. But, you know, I'm learning chords and stuff like that. So that's what I'm doing. So I know some of you guys are probably bored out of your fucking minds. Maybe not. You didn't have to watch this far. You you chose to waste your time and listen to my ass do this. Those are my... I mixed a song on those. My speakers were... I had moved somewhere. I mixed a whole song on those fucking speakers right there. Just those little things right there and headphones. I mixed a whole song and it came out totally awesome. By using references, alright? By using other tracks and listening to, let's say, some tr tracks by Rashida. Because that's the type of track I was doing. If you don't know who Rashida is, she's the Georgia Peach. Y'all may have heard of her. Uh, she was my reference. Her tracks were because it was a very bass heavy. And guess what? All I had was my headphones. You know what I mean? And these fucking little fucking Dell. Fuck, I don't know. They're, yeah, they're E Machine. They're fucking E Machine little fucking speakers. So you can get a good mix, man. You can get a good mix on some headphones and some little fucking speakers, man. Fuck what everybody says about this fucking high dollar shit. All right? Does it look like I'm fucking sporting high dollar shit? No. Did I get some decent results out of my track? Yes, I fucking did. And if you don't think so, well, fuck you. I don't care. It's not about what you think, okay? It's about what everybody else thinks. Not you, but everybody else. So as you can see, I'm not using top-of-the-line fucking $100,000 studio setup here. Would I like to have a little controller there to control the plugins? Yes. Would I like to have a dull monitor setup? Yeah, but I'm not going to have that right now because my computer doesn't have that kind of video card on it. That'll probably be my next computer. So I'm going to shut up now. I mean, I just thought I'd show you guys around the studio. Let's see. Have some awards here you know that's my basic training stuff this is my squad designated marksman uh, for the military course you know snipe some motherfuckers whatever i'm infantry this is my raven award for uh flying the uav i'm a uav pilot <laughs> not a real pilot but i fly a little remote control plane that has spy cameras and shit so this was an ntc i won the award me and my partner for the uh, most hours flown in any rotation in uh, the California Training Center. I think it's kind of cheesy to have that kind of shit on the wall, but my wife threw it up there when I was gone, so whatever. Did I say I was going to shut up already? Look, look, what's this? About them Benjamins, baby. So people come in here, like, let's have, have people over just chilling. We'll throw some tracks on. We'll come up with some ideas, maybe. 
for their track. They'll sit here. We'll hang out. We'll fucking drink some beer. All right. I don't smoke any bud because I'm in the military and they drug test and stuff like that. But, you know, whatever. We get tipsy. There's no smoking in here, by the way. All right, guys. So I hope you guys like that. I mean, I know I talk a lot about some random shit. So, uh, peace. I got more shit coming up for you guys. Free stuff, but I also got stuff that you got to purchase. All right. I put time into this. Sweat, blood, and tears. I'm fucking lying. I ain't crying, but it is what it is. I'll talk to you guys later. Peace out.